Next up, at UFC 305, we got Josh Kulibau taking on Hikardo Hamos. Josh Kulibau, 11-3 in his career. 3-2 and two in his last five. He is on a two-fight skit. He's taking on Hikardo Hamos. 16-6 and six in his career. 2-3 and three in his last five as well. Also on a two-fight skit. This is another fight that's got the community split. I was going to go place a plus 3.5 on this bet, and it's not available because the odds are too close. We got Josh Kulibau. Oh, no, wait. It is available, but it was juiced as hell is the problem. What were you talking about? Wasn't listening. Well, I'll talk about it in a second. A plus three and a half on Ricardo Hamos. It was there, but it was juiced. There's another Minus 160. It was worse than that before. Minus 160 is not terrible. Either way, we got Josh Cooley, pal. He's a solid striker. He's aggressive. He's tough. He throws heat, and he's always live for a knockout. He is willing to engage in a dirty inside-the-pocket fight. He's got no problem making it ugly, and you can see that with his negative striking differential. You don't need to be a math wizard to see that he gets hit more than he hits his opponents. He's not much of a grappler, but he does have some solid takedown defense at 67%. Jacob, take a wild guess how many offensive takedowns he has in the UFC. Ricardo Hamos? Josh Cooley Bell. How many offensive takedowns he has? Mm -hmm. Is it like zero? It's zero on 10 attempts. He is 0 for 10 on takedown attempts in the UFC. Yes! He, he's coming off that decision loss. Woo! To Danny Silva, where he was chinny early, oh. but he's, he seems to wake up after being dropped oh. and took over the striking. He's taking on Ricardo Hamos. He is a very dangerous fighter. He's good everywhere. Tall, rangy, slick BJJ. He's got good kicks, good spinning kicks, high kicks. He'll work that body. He's got a great jab, and he has got leg kicks as well. He's very fast in transitions, and he's coming off that second first-round submission loss in a row. This time, he got caught. He landed a couple of strikes. He had two takedowns, and then that guillotine got snatched up. And um, I talked about this in my quick picks. The more I stare at these numbers, the more crazy they are to me. I I don't think Cully Bow should be a huge favorite, and he's not today. Did you say Cully Bow? No, I said Cully Bow. I, I don't fuck up words. That's weird. Just last week, he was a 2-1 to one favorite. So what you see in the chart here are the opening odds and the current odds. He opened... At minus 115. He's currently minus 133. But somewhere in between, oh, minus he shot up. Minus 150. It's going back. Because mm. somewhere back during the week, back, back to that. Oh. he shot up to like minus 180. And that's when I saw the odds. And I was like, he should not be that big of a favorite. The reality is, he is tough. He absolutely should win this fight. He's good. I think he does win this fight. But he's been chinny. And he can't defend a takedown. Ricardo Hamos is dangerous. He's willing to wrestle. Cooley Bow is going to be the pick because I do think he can make the fight ugly and hopefully move around enough and slow this down, be the local guy, do the local things, and squeeze out a close decision. Cooley Bow is the like ridiculously ever so slight pick, which is why I was going to go plus three and a half. Maybe what I'm going to do, Jacob, while you're talking, I've got my confidence levels for every single pick. Maybe I'll go do plus two, three and a half for every single one of my low confidence fighters. Maybe we'll do that. And Josh Cooley Bell will be one. Or uh, Ricardo Hamos will be one of them. Ricardo Hamos. What do you think of this fight, Jacob? Uh, I'll be straight up and honest with you. Um, and this is full Straight trends. up now, baby, won't you? Sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Hit and run. That's like your thing. And that just really just came over me. Why don't you be honest with us? Don't lie to us, Jacob. How, uh, why, don't you, why don't you be honest with us? How how often do things come over you? I don't know what we're doing here. Who do you think wins this fight? Very often. Happen a lot. Who do you think wins this fight? I mean, this goes back to the whole conversation I had while you were gone <laughs> about professionalism and the text that I get that I can't do stuff like that. Don't do this stuff like that. Right? I, I, I played them the voice. This time you're right. I've never I, sent I play, that text, I, but this time you're right. I played them the voicemail of you being like, yes, you get serious, you can't joke around. And then you just break out in song, and then it might break down. Um, I'm trying to be honest with the people. I'm trying to be full, full transparency here. You guys lo love the lock of the week, right? Woo! Um, Hikaru Hamos is not the lock of the week, but I'll be honest with you. In my opinion, he's probably the most logical choice for lock of the week. I just think he's the flat-out better fighter than Josh Koulibau. Josh Koulibau is a fun dude. 
right? And when you're a fun dude, that's because you're in a lot of back and forth fights, and he's in a lot of back and forth fights. How does he lose fights that he's in a back and forth flight fight with? He gets backed up with pressure, and he gets taken down. What does Ricardo Hamos do to people normally? He takes people down, and he keeps the pressure, and he's a more dynamic striker, and he has the bigger moments. Aside from Ricardo Hamos jumping into a guillotine for the third time, which the odds of that have to be fucking <laughs> astronomical. I think he is going to get the takedowns because when he's getting those guillotines, he's taking people down. He has good takedowns. I think he can take Josh Coulibaly down, be the more aggressive grap grappler. I know Coulibaly can be a little bit slick in those transitions, but I think Ricardo is better in the wrestling, better in the grappling. And honestly, I think he's a better striker as well. So I bet him as a dog. And if I didn't have the lock of the week, who I, um, who I have... I would, um, it probably would be Hikata Hamos, but I got a more of a, a special, uh, lock of the Angelo. Mm, I'm looking forward to it. I just placed that bet. Half a unit, Hikata Hamos plus three and a half. I have a money line on Hikata. Minus 160. You shut up. Your bets are premium. You're the hot hand. $8,500 in DraftKings Fantasy, 7700 Listen, I, I, I picked Josh Cooley about a win. But I think it's a, a really tight back and forth fight. And that's where the plus three and a halfs are great because a plus three and a half is just betting the spread. You're just buying points on the judge's scorecard. The way the math works out, we've done it a million times for you, is you just need one fighter, or sorry, uh, you need a fighter to win one round on all three judges' scorecards. So if this is a 29 28 decision for Josh, the bet hits. If it's a split decision for Josh, the bet hits. If Ricardo wins outright, the bet hits. The only way this bet doesn't hit is if Josh wins a 30-27 or stops Ricardo Homos. Every other outcome, essentially, 30, Ricardo 30, Homos. 30, 90. Okay? 27, 27, 27. Angelo? What? 81. 81. Okay? If you have a three and a half bet, plus three and a half, you're going to add that three and a half here? <laughs> What's so funny? No, go ahead. 81 plus three and a half is? It doesn't work. 84 and a half. 84 and a half. So if the scorecards are 30, 27, this is how you figure it out. The plus three and a half does not hit because it's 30, 70, 20. You need some 29, 28s. You need them. You just do math. It's just math, people. You do this, do this. You put this here, the minus three and a half, you do the same thing over here, over here. We got the quadratic formula, A Okay, we're plus. done. $7,700 in DraftKings Fantasy, you're going to spend that quadratic formula. You spent $7,700 in DraftKings Fantasy? You don't know the quadratic <laughs> formula? No, I do. I'm the math wizard of the two of us. So how fast I did 27 times three. Like... You gonna spend the seventy seven hundred dollars in DraftKings Fantasy? Yeah. On your boy. Great. Got it. If you want to unlock all the other picks, the bets, Jacob gave you some sneak bets. I just gave you a bet here. You can do all of that right now. We want picks.com. Click become a member at so, the top. If someone just goes 81. <laughs> nice try, Thomas. I was stupid there ass, ago. you stupid fuck. I was there <laughs> minutes ago. You stupid, ago. slow ass. <laughs> Rewantpicks.com. Click become a member. It's $10 a month. You're going to get UFC 305. Two fight nights. Actually, very good main evented fight nights. And then UFC 306, which is the Noche card. The greatest value in this space. Literally. End of story, period. Can't argue it whatsoever. Mexican with a three and a four. Vibe with a three. Dollar ninety nine. I clipped that. Anyone else? Damn it! I don't know when he sent this six minutes oh. ago. Oh, what did he clip? Uh, you saying that you waterboard your children? <laughs> oh, well, I don't. I said I don't <laughs> hit them. I said I don't hit them. They're little girls. You don't hit girls. Here's a little. This is parenting speaking advice. of waterboarding. This is parenting advice I get from Tiffany. So if anybody's out there raising daughters, she said you're the man of this house. And they will learn how you treat them is how other men can treat them. So if you hit them, they'll think it's okay to be hit by men. If you yell at them, they'll think it's be okay to be yelled at by men. So I've taken that to heart. And I let me spark uh, this story up because as I was walking past a house 
today on their balcony, I heard somebody slap their kids so fucking hard. <laughs> it was unreal. It literally was like this from, you could hear echo through the complex and then <laughs> the kid just fuck, just fucking losing their mind. It was like they had to pull that thing back from here and just fucking, <laughs> it was so loud. Well, and it's, and it's, and I, I have, I had not hit them. So it's not like she had to like interfere and be like, Hey, listen, stop it. Like, but she was like, you can't yell at them. You can't like, you gotta, no, I was just talking about how to raise them. And I think um, something would have sparked that. No, I got beat bad. I got immigrant parents. I got beat with a belt. You know how terrifying my father was. He never laid a hand on me in my life, and I was scared to death of him. Yeah, yeah. That is fucking intimidation. Yeah. That is fucking intimidation. Jacob, we talk too much. We got 600-something people watching, and Yuhan Hagos is very upset with how much we talk. I'm trying, guys. Sorry, Yuhan Hagos. There's no shortage of people with tapology on in the background that just get right to the point. I recommend you watch that. Um, yeah, so Hakarta Hamos, um, according to this page, is coming off a, um, a guillotine loss. Um, looks like, oh my lord, he is coming off, looks like back-to-back uh, guillotine losses here. He is 16-6. Um, and six. Um, that is 0 and 2 in his last two. Go That's watch those guys. That is literally 90%. That is literally 90% of this space. I have a web camera. I can do this. 